Okay, uh, in this uh, video, I'm going to make a drug in the lab. It's uh, called Dilantin. Um, it's used for, um, you know, anti-seizure medication. It's nothing, you know, too elaborate or too exciting, but um, the chemistry is rather interesting because it's a number of different carbonyl condensation reactions followed by a, a, a rearrangement. So we're gonna grab a 50 milliliter round bottom flask and we're going to add 0 0.40 grams of benzyl that we made in um, the previous lab. Benzyl has this uh, kind of bright uh, yellow color to it. Um, we're gonna add urea. It's a fertilizer, it's also used in synthesis as we'll see. Um, Normally I hold these bottles up so you can see uh, what the formula weight is um, and some of the information about the, uh, the bottle here. So um, it's a five pound bottle, so certainly plenty. Next we're gonna add 95% um, alcohol. This is denatured alcohol. Okay, we're gonna add um, so here it's dissolving, okay. Can't really see the yellow color too well in there. Um, next we're going to add uh, 1.2 milliliters of 30% aqueous sodium hydroxide. Okay, I've pre-reacted um, this. Now when you add this to your round bottom flask, you wanna make sure that you do so uh, below the ground glass joint because this concentration of sodium hydroxide can actually fuse the glass together. Next we want to add a single boiling chip. Okay, and these are just broken up pieces of marble. Okay, it's not a reactant. It just helps with um, preventing bumping and it, it allows for even boiling. So anyways, We set this up in the fume hood behind me for a reflux. Let me show you. Okay, so here's our fume hood. Uh, we want to clamp our flask um, above the hot plate and we want to use a circulating water um, condenser. Okay, so here's our uh, reflux condenser and it's hooked up to the water on the right here. And so we'll attach this here and we'll carefully uh, Bring this down to contact with the uh, hot plate here, okay? And uh, I will start the uh, water circulating here. Now again, the purpose of a reflux condenser is to maintain constant boiling. So I don't know what the mix, the boiling point is of this amount of water and alcohol, but uh, if we heat it up to the boiling point, it's gonna maintain that temperature of that boiling point um, for the whole one hour reaction. Okay, so we're gonna let this reflux for one hour. There will be some changes that take effect. Um, I won't do a time-lapse video uh, with this reaction because uh, I'm running out um, of memory on my phone. So I'll just show you the reaction right before I stop the heater, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get this uh, water here recirculating at a, at a gentle rate, okay? And we'll go ahead and uh, just let the boiling chip take care of the boiling in there, okay? So maybe I'll just show the first five minutes of this, uh, of this, of this reaction here. Um, kind of turns a very dark uh, color when the reaction recedes.
Okay, so that's what the reaction is going to look like for the next hour. It's going to be on a gentle simmer and just kind of be a progress through a darker color, as I recall. So uh, I'll stop the video now and I'll take you back an hour from now and I'll show you what it looks like right before I stop the heater and I proceed with the uh, isolation and work up this reaction. It's been an hour. You can see nothing really has changed with the color or texture and so on of the reaction. We'll uh, stop the heater, turn off the water and raise this up. It's still boiling in there, so um, the procedure says to cool it for about 15 minutes. Well, to cool it to room temperature. So what I like to do is just put it in some uh, cold tap water to just help facilitate the cooling. Um, so I'll take uh, this reflux condenser off and uh, not too hot and I'll just uh, let this kind of float there in the uh, in the water so it, it, it's very slightly cloudy there's not much um, in the way of uh, precipitate so I'll just let that sit there and uh, I'll come back after 15 minutes and we'll proceed onwards now that the reaction mixture is uh, room temperature we want to next add 10 milliliters of distilled water here and take a look at the uh, contents here. So it's a uh, kind of cloudy of a uh, very, very small amounts of solid are in here. Normally the procedure says to uh, gravity filter the um, the the, uh, the solids out. Now you see the product here is a carboxylate. The carboxylic acid is deprotonated when it's in this very strongly sodium hydroxide or basic reaction mixture. So um, any solid here is not the carboxylic acid. It's a byproduct. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up and show you what that looks like. Okay, so to do the gravity filtration, I use a 50 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, a short stem funnel, and a piece of qualitative filter paper. And I, I don't really flute this uh, as you normally do in the lab. I just put it into fourths here and uh, open the filter paper so that it makes a nice cone and it very easily kind of fits in there with the right shape and I'll go ahead and pour this in here. Once it uh, wets the sides of the filter paper, it seems to adhere to the uh, glass and, and not pop up the sides. And if I carefully hold this, you can see how the liquid coming down through the filter paper is now no longer cloudy. So there's very small amounts of solid here that are being collected by the filter paper, and this is a byproduct, okay? It could be unreacted starting material or other byproducts. And we're asked to uh, rinse this with one milliliter of water. We don't want to do that right now. We want to let this uh, drain through mostly before we add one milliliter of water. The boiling chip is still in there, so uh, we're not worried if it gets trapped in the filter paper or stays behind. We're going to throw that in the uh, solid waste afterwards. Okay, so this takes a while. I'm not going to just let this go and let you watch this. There's nothing really to see here. We're just gravity filtering. And as you know, gravity filtration can be quite slow. So I bring you back when I'm ready to wash the filtrate. All right, we're back to add... Um, our one milliliter of DI water to, to this to just uh, wash the contents. It wouldn't hurt if we used five milliliters, but you know, it's just so slow for this liquid to pass through the filter paper. Uh, so we just do a very small amount here. And uh, again, I'll come back in like five minutes or something and uh, we'll proceed onwards from there. We finished uh, filtering any insoluble solids left in our reaction mixture and washed the funnel. And so uh, there's, it's really hard to see, there might be a 
tad bit solid dispersed on the uh, filter paper and we have a nice clear homogeneous solution that's not cloudy anymore. Procedure set it now says to add about four and a half milliliters of two molar hydrochloric acid. I have three molar hydrochloric acid which will require three milliliters approximately. We want to test with pH paper. I'll spare you the uh, uh, pH calculation but the pKa of a uh, carboxylic acid is about 4.7 or so if you take acetic acid. So we want the pH to be between about four to five to acidify the carboxylic acid. So that's gonna be a kind of a, a brownish color on the paper. So I've got some sheets here and I'll, I'll dip this in and test it periodically. Now, the cool thing is when you add uh, the hydrochloric acid to this solution, it's going to neutralize the carboxylic acid and cause it to precipitate out. Um, actually not the carboxylic acid, the, the dilantin, okay? So we'll start off by uh, swirling this and adding uh, one milliliter of, so when the, when the drops hit, I'm not sure if you can see that, it's cloudy and then it kind of goes away. So I'll add one milliliter in there, okay? And the uh, white precipitate that initially forms eventually dissolves because there's plenty of sodium hydroxide left in this reaction. Okay. And I just like to stir it so not all the precipitate forms in one spot and all clumps up, okay? So. I think now you can finally see on the video that it's starting to precipitate. So I've added two milliliters so far, and we will take a uh, small hanging drop on the tip of our rod, put that on there, and uh, you can see that it's bright uh, green. That is not yet um, acidic yet, so that's a pH uh, seven or eight. So let's keep adding another milliliter or so to this. can see more visual uh, precipitation occurring here. The reaction's getting very visc uh, very thick, milky, milky white, okay, with that precipitate in there, okay? It's also changed away from that yellowish color and it's more white, okay? So let's go ahead and test the pH now. Um, So there's the pH paper. You can see how it's a um, kind of a color there that matches. So that's going to be a pH of, uh, you know, four or five. So I would say that's uh, pretty good. Um, sometimes if you're too exact with things, uh, uh, you, you miss you miss out. But I, I think that's good. I might just add. Um, Seven more drops here just to just to make sure. Okay. All right. So that's good. Uh, do a final test for the pH here. Okay. And uh, it looks it looks the same as before. Okay. So that that orange orange color there for the pH paper. So we got our uh, dilantin that's precipitated out. That's the neutral form of the drug dilantin. And now we're just gonna do the vacuum filtration and isolate the product. Okay, in this step, we wanna uh, do the vacuum filtration on the product. Um, I'm here at the filtration station and we'll get going on that. So I've got a uh, sidearm flask here that I will fix with a clamp. I put the uh, vacuum sidearm on the tubing here. Put our Buchner funnel in there nice and snug. And here, uh, once again, we'll use the uh, qualitative uh, filter papers. And because this reaction is being carried out in aqueous solvent, we're just gonna go ahead and wet our filter paper with water, okay? It's near the end of the day and uh, it'll take overnight to dry anyway. So uh, we'll go ahead and get this started. Turning on the uh, water aspirator activates the uh, vacuum. 
Okay. So that should be aspirating. And we've got um, all of this thick uh, suspension to filter. So we're going to wash with uh, ice water until it's white. It's already white, I think. So but we'll wash enough to uh, get it out of the, the bottle here and into the filter paper. Um, might be a good idea to kind of uh, chill it on ice. Um, it is going to have a little bit of uh, water solubility. But I'm just going to go ahead and uh, proceed onwards. So we'll uh, pour that in there. And we will uh, put a couple squirts of ice cold water in here. couple and we'll add this in there and so you can see that ugly yellow brown color went away there and we have a nice uh, solid. The uh, substance itself looks kind of waxy always when I synthesize this and I'm gonna let this air dry and you'll see the appearance when I pull it off the filter paper onto a watch glass. So I'm gonna let this dry overnight and then I'll take you on to the next step where I weigh it so you can calculate a yield and we'll do a melting point.